Beth here, episode 527. Okay, remember last week, my pity party with my pink eye and my being ghosted? That was nothing. I have shingles. I haven't been out in two weeks. I don't even want to go to the window. I'm scaring the birds. You should see my face. It looks like a deranged party balloon. Half of it is so blown up all around my eye again. Shingles in the eyeball. I swear, 30 years ago, I heard somebody had shingles in their eyeball, and I panicked. I thought I would die if it happened to me. Well, now it's happened to me twice, and guess what? You take it. You take whatever you get dished out. You just take it. I'm, I was going to do this earlier, but I've been playing solitaire. I've been getting pretty good at it. Pretty good, good at learning when my goose is cooked. I wish I'd started playing Scrabble 35 years ago so I could have realized that I was never going to make it as a screenwriter. I had an agent. That's all anybody said I needed. But there, I guess there's something like huge talent. I don't know. Or Tom Hanks' sister. Something. I didn't have it. But the Scrabble? I mean... Solitaire, Scrabble, I didn't learn anything. Solitaire, yeah, I can figure it out really quick. I'm not going to make it. I'm not winning. I wanted to win a game before I did this because it puts me in a great mood. But I have my arbitrary deadline of getting this out between two and four. The fact that I made it arbitrary means it's so important to me. I didn't have to say between two and four. But because I did, I am going to do it. It's the first thing I've done. In days and days and days. Okay, so of course, haven't been to a movie. I can't even get to the mailbox. I'm really afraid I'm going to frighten children or dogs or both. So, haven't done anything like that. All right? I did learn one other valuable lesson. They put me on this drug called Valtrex. And I looked at the side effects I've got them. You think you're crazy when you, when you go into medication, you're like, what's happening? I do feel a little tizzy, but the ones that I really have hopeless, these are the, these are side effects of this drug. Feelings of hopelessness, feeling sad or empty, but no, I can have all three. It's not just feeling sad or empty. You could feel sad and empty. And I think, it, and then I can have depression, which I have. And I'm tired. And you know what? I think it's because I have shingles. I'm not sure it's a side effect. I really don't mind having problems on the inside that I can't see, like GI problems, whatever, stomach issues. I can't see them. They don't manifest. They don't, they don't make an impression in my mind. But this, this is so big. And it takes me back to another time. This is how bad I am about having things on the outside. On Facebook, I, I have this thing where it's memories of living in Roslyn on Long Island in New York when I was a kid. So it's very cute. Little movie theaters, the things we saw. Two days ago, it was the Rosalind, the Rosalind Duck Pond. Now, it was beautiful. It really was. And we went there and we enjoyed it. It was skipping rocks. It was feeding ducks. It was just so much property to run around. But I remember this one time. I think it might have been the last time I went. And my father decided to take all four children out by himself. <laughs> Every time he did it, something terrible would happen. But this seemed like a pretty lovely day in May. Nothing could go wrong. I'll be back in two hours. My mother thought he was a hero. We get in the car. Everything's going great. We're skipping little rocks. He's fantastic at it. He can get like eight or nine. 
I'm, I'm going to make it happen. I tried so hard that I fell into this idyllic duck pond. Let me tell you what, ducks are not only, are not the only thing in a duck pond. Duck guano, duck do. I, I mean, I, it felt like two feet deep and I'm going to allow that I was just nine years old, but it was at least one foot deep of gunk and goo and I fell down and I got my whole body hair, everything I was wearing covered in this horrible, horrible stuff. I'm telling you, it made me feel better about what's happening with me right now. When it happened, I screamed so loudly that a police car came over. My got there before my dad did. He was about, I don't know, a hundred yards away, screaming frantically. They couldn't control me. The policeman wanted to give me a shot. I was jumping and screaming and pulling my hair out. The smell was horrible. The, it wouldn't come off. It was like tar. Went out of my mind. They wanted to take me to the hospital. They thought I was psychotic. I wasn't psychotic. They stripped me of my clothes and this lady gave me her spring coat. And that's what I had on came home still screaming in the car. My mother comes running out, throws me in the shower with a shampoo bottle. I'm in there forever by myself. I'm still screaming. I come out. It still smelled bad. They cut my hair. I couldn't stop screaming. So that's how I feel about having shingles on my eyeball. It just, I'm just not normal. I'm not normal about it. So, but it taught me a lesson because last week I was belly aching about being ghosted and having pink eye. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to belly ache about anything ever again. And I do have a pet peeve and it's a big one because I know something for sure, something much more for sure than Oprah Winfrey ever, ever knew. I know why the pig wears lipstick because I've been wearing lipstick all week. I never wear lipstick at home. I've been putting lipstick on my face. The pig puts lipstick on because it makes them feel better. It's not fair. Give pigs lipstick if they want it. I understand completely on a level that is so deep. I know why the pig wears lipstick. I do not know why the cage bird sings. But I do know why the pig wears lipstick. He likes it. It makes him feel better. That's why he does it. Now, I'm positive. Now you know. You don't have to learn the hard way like I had to. Do not need to learn the hard way. Okay? So I did go through the paper with my one good eye. And there were cute things. There was one really cute thing. It actually made me kind of happy. Because this couple get, gets married and at the wedding, this perfectly healthy guy, although he's 46 and the girl is 33 and they met, he's kind of a crazy guy. And they met while he had this TV show on how to teach people how to date. The girl is gorgeous. She's six feet tall. She's blonde. She's beautiful. They started dating and he starts supporting her through law school. And she's not quite sure she wants to get married and she thinks he's kind of a funny guy. And I'm sure the mother-in-law is like, uh-oh, uh-oh, altruistic boyfriend here. But no, they're getting married. And the mother-in-law, her future mother-in-law, gives her the grandmother's diamond ring. So the wedding's happening. He's just such a goofball, even in the picture. He's got a goofy job. Now she's a doctor. And he lost his job because during the pandemic, they weren't putting on dating shows. And she's supporting him now at the wedding. He has a heart attack right there in front of God and everybody while he's saying, I do. He's also saying, I think, I think I got a pain in my shoulder. They go rushing to the hospital. 
he is in serious trouble. He has to take care of him, rehab him, build him back up. And the mother-in-law, his mother, had no idea what this girl was made of. And she didn't even get to say, I do. They didn't even really get married. So for a year and a half, she brings this guy back to life. I mean, he is in rehab forever. He can't walk. Brings him back, 100%. Fixes this huge problem in his heart that was from birth. Saves his life. So they go to the ceremony again. All the guy wants to do is get to the end of the ceremony. The ceremony is beautiful. His mother's crying his, her eyes out. But so is her father, Erica's father. And he says he was, he was going to give this big, beautiful toast at the first wedding. But he says that all the toasts were light at this one because they don't need to learn how to build a typical sturdy marriage. There was no advice to give them at all. People were asking them for advice. They will be happily married forever. But that girl, that little girl that was on that dating show, turned out to be a keeper. Like you never know. You never know. And her her boyfriend slash husband still doesn't have a job. She doesn't care. He's 46. She's 32. He, she doesn't care. She's crazy about him. And his little face at the wedding, he just looks like probably the sweetest guy to come home to. You know what? Mom's happy. Mother of the groom's happy. I'm happy. Okay, so then there was this other one, and I thought it was kind of interesting. This girl goes out with this guy, and they go into therapy, and she realized she wanted to marry him on the first date. But she found out in therapy that if you had to choose between her or the military, you would choose the military. And she was a D girl in New York City, doing all the shows, having a great life. She marries this guy. And, and he's deployed and she has these kids and they have to work to get it back together every single time he comes home. So finally they go on, he goes on this big long trip and he can't even tell her where he is. So he starts writing letters every night to his family and he realizes in that moment that family comes before military. So when he came home, she was, I mean, really, she went through Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, and Easter, not knowing where he was. And she had two kids who kept wanting to talk to their father. I think that's cruel. But anyway, she was fit to be tied by the time he got home. He shows her the letters. He says, I'll quit the military. She gives him a big hug and kiss. And she said, no, you don't. I just wanted you to ever say that I come first. I don't know why that made me cry, but it did. Now, here's a tiny love story. It's called The Whole Egg. This one really made me cry. And it's not just because my eyes are watering because I have shingles. It could be because I'm on medication that makes me depressed. I'm not sure. You, fit, you let me know. Okay, so here it is. I'll read the whole thing. Because I bawled. I cried. My Nana, it's this picture of this girl with her grandmother. They're both so cute. My Nana doesn't like egg whites, but she eats the whole egg anyway. I'm going to cry reading this. But it's probably the, the Valtrex. Why? I ask one morning on Nana's, as Nana's lips puckered in distaste. I watched her chew the soft edge of her sunny side up egg. Just put them in the compost, Nana, I advised. She smiled. She said, June always liked the whites. And that's when the girl finally understood. June was Nana's best friend, and she died. And they would split eggs when they would go out and have breakfast. They would get one egg, they'd get one meal, she'd eat the whites, and Nana would eat the, the yolks. Now that June's memory is fading and they live too far away. Oh, she's not dead. Oh, thank God. The first time I read it, I thought she was dead. Oh, oh, I feel so much better. Okay. June's memory is fading. Why don't they talk to each other on the phone? And they live too far away to meet in person. 
Nana eats the whole egg. That's the kind of friendship that lasts longer than lifetime. What? Why don't they call each other on the phone? Why don't they take a bus, car, visit? Where does she live in Timbuktu? It doesn't even matter. You can get your cell phone to talk to anybody anywhere. I thought, I thought June was dead. Oh my God. I feel so, I'm so happy I read this twice. First time, I guess my, my blurry vision. God knows what I'm going through. Okay. So then there was this guy named Buddy Duress, 38. He was, he was in TV shows, ready for stardom. And he just couldn't make it because he just couldn't stay off drugs. I think that, yeah, I think I do have a problem. Okay. I think I do. I think, I think, but, but he looks like a cute guy and I did feel very sorry for him. Okay. And here's a great story. This one made me happy on Valtrex. So it's gotta be great. Okay. Dominique Blanc. She's French. Just like, you know, in my obituary, which is so beautiful. I wrote that I speak fluid, fluent French. And every time the French hear it, they go, Oh, it's beautiful because my French, my fictitious French teacher taught me how to speak French. She was also a music teacher. So it's melodious, even though I'm tone deaf in real life. In my obituary, I speak beautiful French in a melodious voice like, Bonjour. You know how they do it on television, in the movies. Bonjour. The girls go like that and their head tilts up. That's how I do it. That's who I am. And also, I was a famous ballerina. In my, what are they going to sue me? Seriously. Why can't I be a famous ballerina in my obituary if I want? If I really want it? If I'm paying for it? I'm going to get it. But anyway, this, this lady looks like I want to look in my obituary. I'm going to, her picture would be perfect. She has her hair pulled back. She has a very French face and she's kind of somber looking and smart looking. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take this, I think. Okay. So she's an actress and she wasn't beautiful enough by French. Of course they were looking at Catherine Deneuve. So who else is good looking? So she never got roles until she was in her thirties. And then she always got to play everybody's best friend, but not anymore. There is a play that has come out called, oh my gosh, I should have figured out how to say this. La D-O-U-L-E-U-R. Okay. So that's a great, that's a great play that's out there. It's called a memoir. That's how you say memoir in French. Okay. I guess it means like diary. Okay. The great thing about this play that she found for herself and she's getting rave reviews. It doesn't matter how old the character is. She gets to do this from age. She started at 64. She can do this play till the day she dies. It's amazing. She found something that no one at all can ever take away from her and no one will be as good at it as she is. And the best part is she brought it to New York and she only needs herself and a table and a pencil and a pad. That is what Broadway is looking for off Broadway is looking for because they can make some money on it. It doesn't involve elephants and kangaroos and people flying and 30 people singing in the background. Just her, a little desk, and I'm looking at it. It's not even pretty. Oh, she's got an apple too. And a glass of water. That's going to add five cents to the production. And this is what she does, and she can bring it anywhere she wants. She takes it to prisons. She takes it to theaters. She takes it to schools. She is making a fortune. She got rid of her manager. She got rid of her agent. She does it all by herself. And everybody wants her. So it's just coming to New York right now to a little theater and it's going to make a splash. Her name is Dominique Blanc. Like Dominique White Blanc. Okay. So like Mel Blanc, only she's much better looking. She has a prettier voice too. Okay. So here's one that I loved. 
because it's crazy because the boys are so cute. College scholarships for cornhole. You know that little game that everybody's playing in there at their barbecues and little parties? These two little boys got scholarships to Winthrop, and the pictures of them playing cornhole are just adorable. And I'm like, really? How did that happen? Well, Winthrop is right next door to the American Cornhole League, a major governing body in the sport. But they're going to bring the sport to colleges, and I think everybody can play it. And it's adorable. It doesn't cost any money. And you, you couldn't find a cuter, cuter two boys. Oh, my gosh. They are just adorable. And Winthrop University is in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So who wouldn't want to send their little girl to a school like that? Probably find a nice little boy who plays cornhole and thinks it's grand. So this is my, you know, I feel better. I actually do. I actually do. I ate a little food that wasn't disgusting. And I think I'm coming out of it. So I've got a couple of jokes just to lighten things up. And I have learned my lesson. I really was a crybaby last week and I'm really sorry and I'll do it again, but I'm not going to like it any more than I liked it last week. But I learned my lesson. There are worse things than pink eye. Shingles is worse. Shut up. Shut up. Don't panic. You know, don't let faith teach you some fickle faith you know, lesson, the fickle finger of fate award. I got it. I cried about pink eye. Now I've got shingles. I'm learning my lesson. I'm going to be grateful that something's not worse. I'm going to be grateful. I haven't fallen into a duck pond every day of my life for the rest of my life. So here's my joke. A wife got so mad at her husband that she packed all of his bags and told him to get out. She looked at him, threw the bags all the way across the yard. One opened up all his underwear. Ha, she laughed. I love it. Perfect. She looked at him with a little old arthritic finger all bent up, and she said to him, Oh, oh, I hope you die a long, slow, painful death. And he looked at her and he goes, Oh my God, you mean I can stay? (laughs) Oh my God, I'm laughing for the first time in two weeks. That was a good one. Okay, here's one. Married couple are on a slow Sunday drive. I wonder if people still do that. Well, we still do that in Austin. It's hilarious. We go on these long Sunday drives to see blue bonnets out in the hill country and they're never there. And then we come back and as we're getting close to our home, They're on the side of the highway. Every single year this happens. Every single year, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm positive they're going to be in Blanco this time. Positive they're going to be in Fredericksburg. So we whip out, go all the way out there, and it takes so long to get there that by the time we get back, the blue bonnets have blossomed on the side of the road. It happens every year. It is crazy. So that's what they're doing. This married couple... On Sunday, they're going to Fredericksburg looking for blue bonnets. So the tire light comes on in their car because they don't have an old car like mine that's 30 years old. And he goes, oh, man, we've got to stop at the gas station. She lo- he looks at his wife and he goes, do you have some money? Got a couple of quarters? She goes, why? Got to get some air. She goes, what do you mean? Air costs money? And he looks at her and he goes, it's inflation. And that's pretty cute. But this is my favorite because it invo- it's a true story and it involves Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, lifelong best friends, 60 years of friendship. And there they were both living in their old homes that haven't been remodeled in 30 years in Beverly Hills, driving their old Mercedes Benz, which I admire. Why give it up? What's, what's great about that? A new car? Who cares? Old kitchens, old everything, TV dinners, every single night of the week. 
and they would sit there and they had TV trays, the old timey TV trays that were stuck in the corner and had the little things where you clamped them into place. And they were like aluminum foil, like so lightweight. They had those. They really did. They would get them out, assemble them. Took two seconds, but assemble is a good word. Get the TV dinners, Swanson TV dinners, out of the oven. Sit them down with a real knife and a real napkin and a real fork. Turn the TV on and watch Jeopardy together. Have a five o'clock dinner, watching Jeopardy, answering the questions. They did it every night. One night, Carl, and it's always, it was always at Carl's house. So Mel comes over. Okay. Takes a look at Carl. Because what happened to you? Carl's nose blown up like a deranged party balloon. I know how he felt. Mel looks at him. He goes, your nose was bulbous enough. What did you get a nose job and get more nose? You didn't need it. He goes, no, I didn't do that. Are you kidding? I would never do that. He goes, okay. What happened? He goes, I was out in my garden. I was looking at the beautiful roses. There was one red. Oh my gosh. It was so gorgeous. I had to sniff the bros. He goes, what? Mel goes, what did you say? I had to sniff the red bros. He looks at Carl and he goes, there's no bee in rose. He goes, there was definitely a bee in that rose. That's my joke. I, I know I'm not either one of those guys, but they're so cute. And it's a true story. Absolutely true story. So is my shingles. So is my duck pond, which I need to remember. I have, I have felt worse about myself. Much worse than I feel right now. Oh my gosh. But underneath my eye, there is this little tiny, uh, thing that Melissa, my skin doctor says she can't get off because it's skin damage, sun damage. And she can't get it to go away. Okay, it's tiny. No big deal. Not now. It looks like a hockey puck. Oh my gosh, it is so ugly. It's blown up. It's right under my eye. I look like the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh my gosh. If And, it, and, it, and it's not going down. I mean, the cheek's going down, but the hockey puck wart ugliness isn't going down. I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, please go back. And I used to hate it. I was like, Melissa, get this off my face. Ugh, I hate it. I can't get it off. It's sun damage. We need to leave it there. This is another one, just like the other one. Pink eye, shingles, little tiny thing that didn't bother me is now a big hockey puck. I need to lay low, keep my mouth shut, appreciate what's going on, even though it's not great. It all could be worse. My greatest fears can be realized. I need to stop looking at the unbright side. I need to look at the bright side. If this hockey puck thing, wart, it looks like a wart. It looks like the Wicked Witch's wart. If this goes away and I get out of shingles land, I will never complain again. Or if I do, I'll be sorry. I won't. I'll try not to. I, I know I'm going to do it again. But I'm not going to do it this loud. I'm going to do it quieter and for a shorter duration. And I'm going to catch myself. And I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to be grateful. Just grateful. That's right. I hadn't even thought about this. I've got pink eye shingles. I've got little tiny blemishy thing, hockey puck. There's a lesson in this. Oh my gosh, I think I see it. Oh no, I never see lessons when they really appear, but this one is huge. Be grateful. 
be grateful, be grateful, and shut up. That's what I'm going to do. Stay sane, be grateful, and shut up, and I will do it. I'll be back next week. Hopefully, my word will be gone. Keep your fingers crossed, or I'll keep my fingers crossed. It's my word. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.